Hey folks, my name is Adam Hughes. I'm an application engineer with GoEngineer. And today we're going to take a look at how the RTX A6000 from NVIDIA's GPU lineup pairs with SolidWorks Visualize. Specifically, we're going to take a look at the CUDA core operations in Visualize. And then we're also going to compare the same project one-to-one -one with GPU rendering versus CPU rendering. Now, for those of you who might not know, you know, Visualize exclusively uses CUDA cores for active rendering in the UI and then rendering through the render queue, right? So it's all CUDA core processing. What we can also do is turn on the CPU mode, which allows us to instead use, uh, instead of using the CUDA cores, just use our CPU and there's a hybrid mode. So we're gonna talk about those just real quick before we get started. The CPU mode, um, again, just utilizes 100% of your CPU. But what I like to tell people is that even though you might have a pretty darn good CPU, like an AMD 5950X, that's what I'm running right now, the problem is, you, you know, you, you have 32 cores, but the problem is those 32 cores are really good at not just rendering, right? They're really good at all kinds of things. In fact, you can compare those 32 cores as um, as to Goliaths, right? Goliaths, these huge giants filling a bucket full of boulders, like massive boulders. And you can imagine that it can fill that bucket pretty fast given the boulder size, right? But now let's take those calculations, maybe those complexities that a CPU is really good at handling, and let's break it down into something very basic, like something a CUDA core can handle. So if we then instead ask a giant to, instead of lifting a boulder and filling a bucket, but lifting one pebble at a time and filling a bucket, you would have a whole lot of wasted time, right? Now when we flip it over and we talk about uh, GPU rendering, and we talk about CUDA cores. CUDA cores can be, th can be thought of as like a whole bunch of worker bees, right? And each bee is going through and lifting up a pebble and filling the bucket. So you can imagine how 10,000 worker bees, 10,000 CUDA cores, would fill the bucket way faster than say 32 Goliaths lifting that same proverbial pebble, right? So, so we're, we're going to see a difference between the two. Like it's, it's, it's a matter of fact, right? But how much a difference is really a factor of how much more GPU power you have versus how much more CPU power you have. Now the CPU power option inside of Visualize is pretty nice because if you don't have a, like a dedicated uh, graphics card on your laptop, then you can turn on the hybrid mode, which you know uses whatever onboard graphics you have plus your CPU to try to get a render out. Or if you don't have any graphics at all and it's just your CPU graphics, again, you can use your CPU in this case, but really you're gonna see the most bang for the buck when you pair Visualize with a dedicated GPU, specifically an NVIDIA CUDA core GPU if you're using the iRay render, right? The iRay render engine inside of Visualize. So we've talked enough about this. Without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at Visualize. All right, so now that we have Visualize open, we're gonna look at this uh, three-wheeled vehicle, all kinds of different textures and appearances applied. And the two things we're gonna be looking at here is the pass count and then passes per second, right? So as soon as I stop going, we're going to look at the 3000 mark, how long it takes to get the 3000, and then the passes per second. And you can see that it's spooling up here. So I want to direct your attention to something else real quick. This might just pause it just for a fraction of a second. We're going to pull this over and bring this in. Here we go. And what we can see now is the uh, GPU usage. It's spiking, it's going up and down, but you can really see the CUDA core usage. So if you grab one of these graphs and you turn on CUDA core, right? You can see that I've stopped it again. We'll go ahead and turn on the active render. You can see the CUDA core usage spike. We'll restart that 3000 count here. Looks like we're maxing out at about 74, 75 passes per second on a relatively complex file, I would say. We're about halfway done from the 3000. Again, our GPU is being utilized at about 55% on this one with the CUDA core usage at about 70 or 94% rather. It's using about 10 gigs of RAM to open this file. So you can imagine that if you don't have a GPU with more than 10 gigs of VRAM, you might run into some issues, some crashing. So the VRAM is definitely correlated to file size. Oh, it finished. <laughs> Didn't notice it in the graph, but yep, it's finished here. And we can see the result. Actually looks pretty good. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna transition this over to the CPU mode. So if I go to Tools Options and I go to 3D Viewport, I'm using iRay Render, 
and I'm going to turn off my RTX A6000 and turn on my CPU and say it's full CPU load. The reality is because I'm running recording software, I'm gonna to have to limit this to about 80%. So 80% of an RTX, or 80% of a AMD 5950X rather, because um, I, need, I need some resources to run Windows, my capture card and my recording. So let's go ahead and turn this on. This is gonna need a restart for the changes to take effect. So we'll go ahead and reload, um, visualize here. All right, so the first thing I wanna point your attention to is that we are indeed in CPU mode, right? We're leveraging 80% of the CPU, in which case I should change my graph now to my CPU graph so you can see all the CPU cores using. I should note that it took about twice as long for this file to open for whatever reason with the CPU mode on. And we're gonna be looking at our CPU clock speed, of course, and then we're gonna be looking at um, how much RAM we're using, how much memory we're using. Now this is different than the memory I recalled before. That was VRAM, this is gonna be motherboard RAM, right? So no GPU being utilized at all here. Okay, so we're going to um, reset this render here real quick. This is a relatively complex file, so it's not as snappy as it was before, that's for sure. But again, we're looking at passes and then passes per second. So we have 32 cores all running, mostly at their peak, it looks like. You can see when I've stopped the render versus when I started it by the, by the decline um, you see here on the graphs. We're using 33 gigs of RAM. That's, that's a multitude of different programs running. That's also the capture, capture card the OBS Studio, uh, Camtasia, as well as SolidWorks Visualize. So there's a lot going on, but you can see if you didn't have, if you didn't, if you only had 32 gigs of motherboard RAM, you would also run into an issue here. We're peaked at about six passes a second on this guy. And it ramped up from about four to six. So a significant difference between how long it takes the GPU to render um, using CUDA cores, again, that, that uh, swarm of bees sort of thing, right? Lifting up the pebbles versus the, um, the CPUs, right? Uh, really good at multitasking, not so good at, at uh, these micro calculations, I suppose. And we've pretty much peaked out. Now watching this render, <laughs> it's gonna be like watching paint dry. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fast forward through this just real quick. All right, now that we've finished the CPU render, you can see it took a whole lot more time to actually run that and complete it than it did with the GPU. Okay, the last thing I thought we'd talk about, just for a full spectrum comp comparison between the RTX A series cards, which is the A series designates the workstation card, right? Is that we have the A thousand or the the A four thousand, A five thousand, A six thousand GPU graphics cards, and you can actually just go to Wiki and type in NVIDIA GPU. You can pull this up. Um, listed here is a whole bunch of great specs, but really what we're really interested in is the, really, really, <laughs> is the CUDA cores, right? So the A4000 has 6,100 CUDA cores. The A5000 has 8,192 CUDA cores. And the A6000 has 10,752 CUDA cores. Now, what does this all mean to you? Well, one thing I figured out with Visualize is that it's pretty linear when it comes to CUDA core count count and render time. In other words, today we looked at the render times in an A6000 and and then compared it to the CPU, but specifically on the GPU side of things, um, using 10,752 cores, you know, it took this long, right, to render your, your, your project. And um, it's safe to say that when you scale down or scale up, for instance, if we look at it like an A4000, um, with 6,000 CUDA cores, it would take, you know, a little less than half the time. And then an A5000 would be like a 30% improvement on that. And then an A6000 would be a 30% improvement on the A5000. So it, it escalates. So this is a kind of a decent metric to kind of get you in the right direction as, as far as to like what GPU, you know, you should be looking for. You might be looking at, it's like, do I need, am I loading 10 gig files, right? Then maybe 
you know, an A4000 is just good enough. If I'm, am I loading 16 gig files? Uh, do I do I not want to wait for renders to finish, right? Then you're jumping at the A5000, A6000 range, right? So when you're when you're shopping these out and you're looking at the specs, the CUDA cores is what makes Visualize run faster. And there's the breakdown of all three different CUDA core options for the A4000, 5000, 6000 GPUs. Okay, so to sum this up, we've talked about NVIDIA's GPUs paired with the uh, Visualize rendering tool inside of SolidWorks, right? Um, that it uses CUDA cores, and CUDA cores are definitely, <laughs> um, the more CUDA cores you have, the, the less time it takes to render. We've also compared uh, CUDA core rendering versus CPU rendering, um, all utilizing the iRay engine inside of SolidWorks Visualize. And I feel like we have a pretty good baseline now so that you can go make your own decision, do your own research, and ultimately decide on what GPU is going to be best for you. Hey, great. I hope you liked this video and I hope you enjoyed it. I, uh, I hope you learned something as well. This is Adam Hughes, Go Engineer. Thanks for watching.